my lovelies. We're so nearly there. All that we've got left to do is the cloak. So I'm filming this after the submission deadline for the Foundations Reveal competition, which means that it's all done. It's all finished and it's already photographed and submitted and it's very exciting. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna talk you through what I did and maybe why, but sometimes it's unclear. So we'll see. As you may know, I did have a little bit of a debate as to whether it should be a cloak or robes because in the books it's described as robes. So academic robes, which would have sleeves and a cloak obviously doesn't have sleeves and it's just the kind of thing that wraps around, maybe has a hood, sometimes has a collar. See my first video for a comparison on the two using Lord of the Rings. I actually went for a cloak in the end, partly because I was running out of time and I knew that just a semicircular cloak was gonna be pretty quick and easy. And partly because it kind of fitted with the theme of 18th century, because it turns out red riding cloaks were a thing for women in the 18th century. What was actually common was using red wool broadcloth to make these bright red, they were called cardinal cloaks. And something that was very recognizable about them specifically to that century was sort of fan pleating in the back of the hood. And I read that this was apparently so that the hood could be big enough to not squish down the hairstyles of the ladies at the time. I don't know if that's true, but it would make sense. So I figured that would be a nice way to tie this all in with the 18th century, uh, but also having that lovely red color to match the hat of the Ontine University robes. Let's make a cloak. Let's just do it. So what I did first of all was mark and cut out the fabric. I'm using a red wool polyester mix. This is the same fabric that I use for the hat and I'm going to be using a wine red cotton for lining. Cotton probably wouldn't have been used at this time in the 18th century, but meh. I feel like we've been through this many a time. <laughs> so in terms of the actual pattern, I'm not using a pattern that I bought or printed out or anything. All it is basically is a big old semicircle where the radius of the circle, so half the distance across the middle of the circle, that is how long you want the cloak. So you cut that out and then you do a smaller semicircle in the center and that is just where the neckline is. For the hood, I took inspiration from, ah, uh, it's an article online. I will try and find it and link to it in the description because it was very useful for making an 18th century cardinal cloak. I sort of used the basic hood shape, but I figured out using a measuring tape and my dressing gown hood how big I wanted the opening to be. I've cut that out in the red wool and I've also cut it out in this sort of fake shape and that's for the hood lining just to make it nice and soft and cozy. So first we're going to work on the hood. I've pinned it and stitched it halfway up the back since the top half is going to be the bit that's fan pleated. I've then folded in the raw edges of the unstitched part of the back of the hood and just basted that so that I don't have to wrestle with it while I'm pleating it. In order to work out the fan pleats I've placed pins at one inch intervals along the open part of the back to match where the pleats will go. It just so happens that by very happy accident I have exactly the right amount of inches for this to alternate properly. This was not intended. This was entirely accidental and I probably should have planned it that way but hey ho I'll take what I can get. So it's kind of hard to explain how the plan plan pleats. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to explain how the fan pleats work so hopefully the video will give you more of an idea. So basically I, I picked up a stitch on every other pin so that when I pulled the thread tight the inner parts of the pleats would be gathered into one point and then the outer parts are sort of sticking out. And then in order to pull those outer parts into that same point I did the same kind of running stitch where I picked up one point at the remaining pins and then pulled those sticky out edges in. And then I stitched everything down an inch below the original opening to secure the pleats down and to just make it all look consistent. I did all of this for the hood lining as well as the outer but I might have done it on the wrong side. So I did it so that what you see on the back of the outer hood is also what you see on the inside of the hood but I don't know if perhaps I should have done the lining so that you can see what you would see on the inside. But I, I personally, I feel like that would look messy. So I'm, I'm gonna stick to my guns and say this is correct. It's correct for me. This is what I wanna do and it's my project, so there. Then I basted the lining to the outer hood and the hood is ready to be attached to the cloak. I really think we should make hoods 
fashion because I mean look at this it's like super warm it's gonna keep you dry it saves the whole oh it's raining but it's too warm to put in a coat thing it's easier to fit in a bag than a whole coat and like look at this it's so cute I could definitely get away with wearing that and people thinking that it's a legit hood attached to something make hoods fashion so when I was lining up the neckline of the cloak with the bottom of the hood, I realized that the cloak neckline is massively too big. And it's either stretched out or I've been like wearing it and messing about with it, or I've made an error in my calculations, um, which is sadly probable despite my having a maths degree. <laughs> so in order to solve this problem, rather than trimming down so it's not quite a semicircle anymore, all I did was putting a little pleat in the back. And I quite like this because it's a nice little reference to the Robella Francaise, and I'm not going to do my French accent because I'll upset someone, uh, which had typically like two big box pleats in the back. And I quite like that. I quite like that there's a little reference to other 18th century dress in the cloak. So I, I'm, I'm happy with the mistake. <laughs> So then I pin and stitch the hood to the cloak. And that's basically the main shape of the cloak done. Now it's time for embroidery. So I've used ancient runes as the embroidery. In the book, it describes the cloak as having magical sigils embroidered on it. It's also described as them being embroidered in sequins, but I didn't want to do that. I just didn't, so <laughs> I've chosen the same nice, like, shiny, it's not nice, it's horrible to work with, but the same shiny embroidery thread that I used for the hat. So rather than looking up crazy curly magic sigils, I've just used ancient runes for a number of reasons. Partly because I'm reading this fantastic book called The Book of English Magic by Philip Cargom and Richard Haygate, and it basically just looks through like the history of actual magic practices. And I mean like regardless of whether you believe in magic or not, it just looks at what the people of Britain have done in the past in the name of magic. And there was one section on Anglo-Saxon runes, and people used these runes for divination. So if any of you have seen Stardust, you know where the witch that Michelle Pfeiffer plays has the little runes that are on the little black wooden blocks and she throws them in the air and yeah it's it's that it's that basically i thought this would also be a nice nod to the fact that one of the few things rincewind is actually good at is languages and he can understand languages pretty quickly so i thought that having an actual ancient language on his cloak would be quite appropriate in terms of the actual words that i'm spelling down the edges i've gone for rincewind wizard and then unseen university and then at the top of the hood here where it would be fastening i've gone for a u on each side so that when pulled together it makes u u which stands for unseen university oh my god the sun are you serious dude do you know how pale i am already i can't see i can't see anyway because i haven't got my glasses on and now i can't see even more okay have you calmed down thanks so for each rune, what I've done is I've drawn it on in white pencil. I've then backstitched over the markings. And then I've sort of gone over the stitches, sort of going in and out on the surface. And that just kind of spirals the embroidery thread around the top of the stitching. It doesn't show through on the back of the work, but it just smooths out that line and makes it look a bit more fancy. Once the embroidery is done, the next stage is the lining of the cloak. So I've pinned that to the bottom edge, and I've done that right sides together. Then I stitched all of this massive amount of fabric on a teeny tiny table, somehow. And then I folded that under and pressed it so that the lining isn't visible. So on the underside there's a little bit of the wool and then the lining starts. Then I've basted the edges of the lining and the outer together at the centre front openings. I folded under the edge of the lining at the neckline and pinned to the hood, making sure to hide the seam between the hood and the cloak. And then fold this down by hand. To finish, I'm using this ribbon, I think it's just polyester I'm afraid, and I've folded this over the raw edges, so that's the two centre front edges and the edge of the hood. And I've pinned and then fold this by hand on both sides. And that's it. So there we go.
know. It's actually a lot prettier than I expected. <laughs> I guess when I pictured the outfit in my mind, it was gonna be a little bit more rugged and it just turned out looking really pretty, you know, with the ribbon edging and with that nice fan pleating in the back. I'm not mad about that. I really like it. And it's nice because it means that I can wear it out. I have worn it out. I've gotten some very strange looks, but that's probably because I wore it to Sainsbury's. I really love it. It's really warm, which is great because I did the photo shoot outside in like three degrees Celsius, obviously. Not Fahrenheit. <laughs> I honestly don't know if I would have done anything differently. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. I know I say that about everything and it seems a bit big headed, but I think this might be my favorite thing that I've made out of all of the different Rincewind outfit pieces. <laughs> and I feel a lot like a magical Red Riding Hood, which I didn't know was a desired aesthetic of mine, but apparently it is now. I'm gonna get it. I really like how it looks with the hood up. Obviously I won't be able to have the hood up in the photos because I'm gonna have my wizard hat on. And you know what, I thought that dyeing my hair dark red would clash with it, but I think it actually goes really well. Why? Why can't you just give me consistent lighting? This is gonna look shite. Thanks very much for watching guys. It's been a pleasure to do this and the next step is to show you the final outfit, which is I can't even tell you how happy I am to finally get to show you this. So please subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram, that's in the description. Give the video a like, all of that stuff. And I will see you soon. Bye.